welcome everybody to the 2022 Mazda 3 Sport. The Sport here means it's the hatchback and this very car has the turbocharged engine and the all-wheel drive as an option. Let's see how this car is. The front end of the Mazda 3, I think I'm a big fan of. It's the typical Mazda design theme, but I mean, it's a design theme that I'm a very big fan of. There's a big grille, the sleek headlights with DRLs inside them on the indicators, very neatly integrated into them. And there's a big number plate holder in the middle of the grille. Not much going on, very simplistic, but yet very radical. And I think it looks really cool among the other cars in the segment. The side profile of the Mazda 3 Sport is where you see the real hatch credentials. Up to probably the front, front three quarters, it would resemble to the sedan. But that's where the rear hatch part starts from the C-pillar. The C-pillar is the most prominent design element in the side profile. It's really, really thick and that's what lends it the Sport tag. It's got very beautiful 18-inch rims which are exclusive to the GT variant. And it's got blacked out side skirts as well. Blacked out on the windows as well. No chrome and I think it looks really, really good. The rear, again, has the same Mazda design theme. It's got the same round elements in the taillight, which smoke surrounds, which look really good. And again, it's specific to the GT variant. There's a big black spoiler as well on the hatch gate and a big black diffuser as well with twin pipes. Being the turbo engine, this has the twin pipes. Again, a very clean, subtle look, but it's something that all Mazdas pull off and this Mazda 3 pulls it off as well. Now I'm inside the Mazda 3 Sport and the same minimalistic design theme that carries on the ins from the outside carries on into the inside. Very less going on, big interior panels with leather which actually look really good, it's got nice stitching as well. You've got the big 10 inch screen which is on its own, nothing around it, no clutter. Just some minimalistic physical buttons for the air conditioning, the climate control and some buttons here to control the big screen. The big screen, however, is not touchscreen, which is a downer. I wish it was touchscreen because the resolution is really, really good. But I like these buttons as well. And they sound and click. They have a very nice, you know, tactile feel. It feels really premium. The gear lever, again, has touches of aluminium and leather, which feels premium. You do have a cup holder as well to accommodate stuff. This is a nice little glove box which slides back and opens as well. You can put in a lot of stuff. The steering wheel is very sleek, very slim, but it's great to hold. It's got nice thumb contours as well. It's got paddle shifters and all the buttons you could ask for, the volume buttons, the cruise control, adaptive. Again, the same indicator stocks. Again, it's just minimalistic, but really nice. You've got a lot of aluminium on the, the steering wheel, which looks really good. And the, you know, the cluster, the speedometer cluster is very nice. It's part digital, part analog. So it has that perfect retro look with some nice modern touches as well to make it relevant in today's times. Again, just leather, gloss back, aluminium, the three main materials that can be found inside, but it's a really good design and it's really functional. And that's what I love the most about this interior. Seats are really comfortable. Uh, they're kind of on the slimmer side, but they've got really, really good support. Lower back support, adjustable, the lumbar. Uh, the headrest is really nice. And again, it's really comfortable. You can do long journeys. I've been driving this car a lot and I've not tired it at all. One notable mention in this interior is the Bose sound system. Now, most of the cars that I've driven or reviewed have Bose systems, but the one set up in this particular car sounds really good. The bass is really punchy, the treble is really nice, and they're really finished well in this aluminum finish on the doors. I think that stands out and it looks really good. Seat of the Mazda 3 Sport and the little, you know, the thick C pillar, the hatch credentials kick in and headroom is a little bit on the tighter side. I'm sure the sedan has much more headroom because it has a more flowing you know the rear c pillar but because it's a hatchback it's been cut off you can find it a little bit cramped it's not a problem for me i'm five foot eight but i can definitely see taller people brushing their hair against the roof the seats are really good backrest is at a very good inclined ring angle the under thigh support is really good uh the windows are a bit on the smaller side and it's not a panoramic roof so with the, all the black interior it can be a little claustrophobic inside but space is not a problem. The seat back has been carved out to make as much knee room as possible. There is an armrest with cup holders in the middle. Again, you've got the basic stuff, but that's about it. There are no AC vents or no charging ports in the back. That's a downer. I wish at this price point, Mazda should have provided at least AC vents in the back. Now, let's get behind the wheel of the Mazda 3 Sport. 
as i said this has the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine produces 250 horsepower on 93 octane and on the regular 89 octane it produces 228 horsepower which is still pretty healthy if you ask me uh, the torque numbers is about 240 foot pounds of torque which helps with all wheel drive to put push this car from 0 to 100 in under 7 seconds the number is close to 6.6 6.7 which is again very impressive for a car in this segment so let's see how this car drives slot the gear lever into d set your foot off and there is no such thing as turbo lag you know the engine is just ready to just jump forward push the throttle a little bit and it actually picks up speed very very linearly very very linear yeah, it's actually really nice and then you come to a corner and then you realize that the engine is good but the chassis is even better the steering feel is so good so precise you can you know place the car just perfectly in corners it's so good Another thing that I must compliment are the brakes. The brake pedal feel and the brakes themselves are actually spot on. You you know the phrase, the car stops on a dime. It might sound cliche, but this car actually does it. It's actually really, really good on the brakes as well. As you can see, I mean, you know, the driving dynamics of this car is just faultless. Uh, the handling, the engine, the braking is just all just perfect the ride is on the stiffer side it's just a typical you know Mazda trait especially this car is running on the 18 inches as well so the ride is definitely quite stiff not as comfy as say like maybe a Civic but it's still manageable and it has on the on the higher speeds on the highways it actually rides really well the, it's really compliant uh, it doesn't get pushed around so that's that's really it, it doesn't get pushed around so it's you know really uh comfortable that way on the highways as well on the city on some potholes it does get uh jarring sometimes on potholes but again very much manageable mazda's nailed the ride handling and all the driving characteristics this car has to provide in conclusion then the mazda 3 sport gt this is the hatch it has some downsides compared to the sedan the boot space is not as much as the sedan but everything else i think this does better i think this looks much better the seat pillar the thick seat pillar i think this car pulls it off really well and because it's a hatch i think it, it brings a bit more fun to drive characteristics the handling the the chassis it's just a bit that smaller makes it a bit more flickable it's much more fun to drive this having the all-wheel drive and the turbocharged engine just pushes that fun to drive quotient to the next level and i think at $35,000, this car has it everything. It has all the equipment. It looks so good. It has decent fuel economy, not the best in the segment, but it's something that's not a deal breaker. And something that looks so good, I mean, if I bought one, I'd just turn around and keep on looking at it all the time.